today's topic is database applications and in our syllabus uh, we have so far covered I'm going to go through the syllabus a bit okay our syllabus or our subject course name is free and open source software for personal computing the course code is IT1306 so this is a GPA subject and uh, we have three credits in this particular subject and as you can see here this is a core subject which means it's not optional okay and also this is a gpa subject right and uh, as per our syllabus we have so far covered the introduction to f4ss or free and open source software and then we have covered word processing for electronic documentation using the writer and then we covered spreadsheet for calculation using calc and today our topic will be databases for processing data where we will be using the LibreOffice base for, for covering our uh, topic and we will be using the software base for actually uh, working with databases and uh, get to our objectives of this particular syllabus and uh, this particular topic and uh, we also covered this topic 6 where we dealt with the LibreOffice impress and uh, we actually created several presentations and uh, for us the remaining parts are actually the today's part the databases for processing data and then the multimedia content development and it is based on the graphical software called GIMP G -I -M -P. and also we need to go through the basics of managing files and folders in the FOSS operating system right so we'll be using Ubuntu for that and I will guide you through the basic stuff of uh, installation of Ubuntu and then the management of files like creating a file, saving a file, copying a file, the basic operations related to the file input and output, I will uh, guide you in a future session. So I just wanted to give you an overview of what we have done and what we have got to do in the remaining time. Okay, so our topic for today is databases for processing data. Okay, what is a database? The first question, databases for processing data and the question that should naturally come up is what is a database? So these are the material subtopics that we need to be familiar with when working with this particular topic. Introduction to database and we have to answer the question what is a database? Different database applications. And then uh, we need to get started with database applications and we have to work with database tables then database queries and forms and finally reports okay so what is a database that is the question can anyone answer here what is a database What do you mean by a database? Okay, no one seems to be answering. So anyway, uh, let's say it like this. In the past, uh, let's say before the existence of computers, how did how do you think people stored data? How do you think people stored data? basically even in uh, some offices in Sri Lanka also there are many places where 
they do not utilize the power of databases uh, when managing their day-to-day -day activities. So how do they actually maintain or manage their data? Okay, uh, well, uh, from what I know, I mean, well, how they manage data is they use, basically use just papers and files, I mean, physical files for managing their data and they write everything on the papers and uh, I don't know how efficient that is and that is of course not so efficient but anyway that is how they maintain data and fortunately uh, some institutions now are turning towards digital forms of data management and that is a good improvement but anyway there are many places where we see that data management is performed manually okay so that is a point of concern for many involved stakeholders and parties because having a manually managed database such as using files and uh, pens and everything you know, everything is manual it can be a pain for everyone involved in the process okay that is why you find it kind of difficult even when you go to particular or some of yes uh, i got an answer collection of data yeah thank you uh, so yeah that is why when we go to some particular officers and we you know we find it kind of really difficult to deal with data and we find it difficult to get through their process and actually it's a waste of time right so that is those are the cases where the importance of databases emerge and that is why you should be familiar with as a, as a student who follows IT that is why you should be familiar with the concepts of working with the databases so in this topic our focus will be to get through the concepts and basics of database and in the semester 2 uh, you will be able to work thoroughly with the database because you will have a separate subject module uh, that aims at giving you the uh, basic information and the basic concepts again uh, with databases and uh, you will have the opportunity to get a very broad idea about databases in semester 2 so I will just go through the concepts briefly here and uh, if you have any question you can raise the questions here okay so our question was what is a database what is a database a database is a structured collection of related data about one or more subjects a database is a structured collection of related data notice the word here a structured collection okay it is a structured collection of related data it is a collection of related data about one or more subjects okay uh, what can you imagine when thinking of a database think of a place where or think of an institution think of an educational institute if they are if an educational institute tries to maintain a database okay they will need to have if an educational institute needs to maintain a database they will need to have a collection of related data by that I mean they will have to keep a collection of the information uh, keep a collection of data of the students for example they will need to keep the student's name the student's address the student's date of birth and then uh, the student's address student's phone number like that they will keep a list of the student's data on the other hand they will at this at, at the same time the institute will try to maintain a track of or a record of the classes conducted by the institute okay 
and when you speak of the classes who conducts classes that is the next question the classes are conducted by the teachers so we have students then we have teachers and if you if we extend this further we will learn that uh, we will have more let's say we have students then we have classes and then the institute would also like to maintain a collection of data related to the students payments the payments made by the students okay at the same time they can also collect data on the marks of students or the examinations faced by the students and the corresponding marks obtained by the students so those are all kinds of data that can be stored in a in a database that is maintained and managed by an educational institute so what they essentially do is they maintain a structured okay it's not anything unstructured but they collect data according to a structured collection and it is a structured collection of related data okay that is why it is said it says a related data the data does not just stay there but the entities the entities that just, i just mentioned the students teachers the marks examinations class fees all those things are related to each other okay they are can i mean not all of them are related to each other in every aspect but in some way there can be instances where at least uh, two of those entities are related to each other okay and it keeps the collection of data about one or more subjects the word subjects here represent the entities for example i just told you about the students or the teachers or the classes those are the subjects that i am talking about not the subjects that we are learning i mean in this particular context the subject the word subjects represent that term the entities or we can uh, anyway use the term entities here so technically speaking a database is a collection of interrelated files stored together with minimum redundancy technically speaking a database is a collection of interrelated files that is the same thing that i just mentioned earlier interrelated the entities are interrelated a collection of interrelated files stored together okay so in a database we collect the data and store all those entities together as a single block of files files stored together with minimum redundancy so what do you mean by redundancy here it's a new word redundancy with minimum redundancy what is redundancy do you have any idea what redundancy is what is redundancy any answer i mean whether it is right or wrong just don't care just let me know what you know about what you know about redundancy okay what it asks us to do is to maintain minimum redundancy when working with a database so it is ask something it is asking us to minimize the redundancy that's the basic idea so the question is what is redundancy think of it like this uh, yes exactly repeating same data that is what we call redundancy in redundancy what we mean actually data redundancy occurs 
or data leak redundancy happens when the same piece of data the same piece of data is stored in two or more separate places or in multiple places and this can occur commonly in many business operations okay with what we mean by data redundancy is the same piece of data can be stored or this when the same piece of data is stored in multiple places and that's when we call the data redundancy occurs when you have let's say imagine that uh, you are let's say you are marks for personal oh uh, yeah let's say you have your uh, we did the quiz recently no so imagine that you did you faced a quiz and you got several marks for the quiz and uh, if you or you if or if the database that you are going to maintain has your marks in several places not just one place but in several places that is the data the same piece of data is spread across one or uh, across uh, yeah across uh, multiple places then the data redundancy occurs so our goal must be to minimize the data redundancy that means our goal must be to minimize the occurrence of the same piece of data getting placed in multiple places so that is our goal and uh, when dealing with databases and when creating a database that simply means what we should do is we should always aim to minimize we should always aim to aim, aim to minimize the redundancy of data and thereby the duplication of data there is no point on having the same data on multiple places if we can just use the same piece of data in multiple places without having to duplicate it okay so our goal must be to minimize the redundancy okay and uh, we also need to uh, keep an idea on how actually the databases evolve from time to time so as i said earlier before the existence of computers we had or oh, still actually in uh, some offices in sri lanka we have the manual databases where everything is stored manually and they write everything on pieces of papers and it's really difficult for everyone involved in the process to manage such data and then uh, we had move on to the digital forms of maintaining data and uh, as a result as a result now we have different types of database management techniques okay so it's important for us to get an idea on the evolution of database as well then uh, databases generally come in one or two styles flat fly flat file databases and relational databases okay so as i said first we had manual databases then uh, initially we had the flat file databases and uh, just like that uh, we use the digital forms of data storage but still we use just simple files for storing data then uh, we have with time we had the relational databases so what is a relational database relational databases are those where the data is held in a number of cross referenced files okay so uh, in our database definition we emphasized on the idea of having interrelated tables or interrelated entities in this case also relational databases are those where the data is held in a number of cross referenced files in order to reduce duplication in other words in order to reduce the data redundancy okay 
data is held in number of cross reference files in order to reduce duplication. They make it easier to find, analyze, maintain, and protect data because it is all held in one place. In a database, you find tables, records, and fields. With a database, with a relational database, actually, it makes our life easier when we try to find find data and we need try to analyze data and when we also try to maintain data that means you also you always need to maintain the database you there are times when you have to add data to a database there are times when you have to find database that means you have to view the cont view the uh, data inside the database and also the, there are times when you have to analyze the database and get the get some particular information out of it and also the protection of data is important because it is all held in one place and uh, what you need to keep in your mind is that with a database or with a relational database what you basically find is tables records and fields so you have a set of tables in a single database so that is what you find in a relational database okay so uh, as you can see here a relational database a collection of data relevant to a given subject is held in a table a collection of data relevant to a given subject relevant to a given subject is held in a table again we have the term subject here and this basically represents the term entity so I gave you an example earlier. We had uh, entities like student, teacher, classes, marks, and attendance. Uh, then uh, anything like that. So they are, those were the entities, and there can be connecting entities as well. So I will get that to later. Anyway, uh, so just get an idea that a collection of data relevant to a given subject is held in a table so i spoke about the storage of students data students name students id students uh, address students birthday the pieces of data like that are stored in tables so if you take student for example the students pieces of data are stored in a single table and then uh, I said that relational data ta relational ta uh, databases consists of tables, records, and fields. So I hope you got the idea of it, what is meant by a table. And then we have records. A record is an information that is related to a single item. The information that is related to a single item you can see that this is a table okay this is in in relational databases this is what we usually mean when we speak of tables so this is an entity and this is an entity about employees when you consider an employee of an organization he basically has an employee number so that is a common occurrence and uh, we have this employee number then every everyone has a name okay no matter what uh, everyone has a name so the employee must have a name therefore we have the employee's name and also the date appointment appoint, appointed or the date of appointment okay so what we essentially mean by a record is when we speak of a record what we focus on is a single item think of it like this this is a record in the table a row represents a record a single row represents a record see this record the record 1111 is the employee number and the the, the person whose employee number is 1111 has the employee name as abc silva and 
ABC Silva has joined the company or he has been appointed on 10 June 2004. But if you consider the employee with the employee number 2222, his name is or his or her name is G. Gunasegar and the date of appointment is 12th May 2003. So this is a record. This row is a record and this row is another record. This is another record. So as you can see, a row represents a record. Okay. So we had in a relational database, we have tables, records and finally fields. Okay, what is field? A field is an individual data item held for each record. A field is an individual data item held for each record. Okay. Now see, these are called fields. In a table, the columns represent the fields. This is a field. And this is a, the employee number. The employee name is a field. Employee number is a field. The date appointed. All those are separate fields. Okay. In the database table, a field is a, actually a data structure for a single piece of data. For example, the date appointed is a single piece of data and that is the data structure. Okay, the records make up the table rows or the table rows are represented by the records and the fields are represented by the columns. Okay. Uh, imagine uh, when you have to fill a form uh, in on the internet. Uh, imagine the place where you, let's say, uh, were registering for BEAT. Uh, I think uh, you had to fill a form online. Okay, you had to fill a form online, and in that case, uh, you, you may be able to remember that uh, you had to enter your name into your last name, first name, your ID number and everything related to your information, you had to enter that. So when you say your name, your first name, when you say your last name, when you say your date of birth, all those are, all those uh, what you filled are called fields. Okay, when they ask your name, that is a field. When they ask your date of birth, that is a field. So that's like that. Okay, next uh, we have to come to the topic, the database management systems. What is a database management system? So we spoke about the relational database in the previous topic and now we have come to the topic, the database management systems. What is a database management system? A database management system is a software used to manage the organization storage access security and integrity of data in a structured database so we spoke about the databases and in databases we had several properties that we needed to follow okay we had to collect data in a structured manner and we need also needed to make sure that the data are interrelated in a manner that is uh, important for us so what a database management system does is it manages everything in an easy to use manner. So that is why it is called database management system. So its basic task is to manage the database. So by managing what it emphasizes is to manage, it should organize the data, it should manage the storage, it should also manage who accesses data. I mean, it should manage the permissions uh, when allowing the specific people to access the data. Okay, it should also manage the security and also the integrity of data that is the uh, accuracy of data okay the data should not change over time the data should be intact okay so those are the things that is relevant for the database management systems and its task is to essentially manage the database there are different types of dbms products there are relational DBMS, there are network DBMS and there are hierarchical DBMS. 
in this lesson uh, our focus will be on understanding or the understanding the concepts of relational database we will be using relational databases in our topic and even in semester 2 you will be mostly using the relational databases relational databases are the most commonly used types of databases uh, at the moment and now we can see the no sql databases and new technologies have emerged but relational databases are still widely used and that is what we are hoping to use uh, in this uh, particular topic the most widely and commonly used type of database today is the relational database management systems rdbms relational database management systems following is a list of database management systems used today we have the enterprise type rdbms such as the oracle server or the sql server and then eformix so those are some examples of enterprise type rdbms then there are relational database management systems specifically made for computers as well personal computers and uh, first example we have the base so that is essentially what we are using in this particular topic then we have microsoft access paradox and approach uh, it's important that uh, you remember these or oh, several examples of these database management systems because in the examination you might be tested on this kind of uh, questions i mean they might ask you several uh, I, they will give you a list of databases and uh, it's important that you have a basic idea of the different types of relational database management systems which are in use today and in the past okay so now we spoke about now we speak spoke a lot okay now we spoke about about the databases about relational databases and about relational database management systems and also we learned what a table means what a record means and what a field means okay now uh, now our focus will be on relational databases relational database management systems and that will be our sole focus in our lesson from now onwards okay now the basic concepts there are several basic concepts that you need to be aware of okay, there is pr a primary key what do you mean by primary key a selected field that uniquely identifies a record in a table a selected field that uniquely identifies a record in a table okay so now we have in this table the student id see if you can find duplicate student id here this is 2305 with the primary key actually each record should be unique and we identify that uniqueness using the primary key okay now we have in this particular table student id as the primary key that means if it is the primary key you will never be able to see another record having the same student id for example if we had l 00023452 instead of 1254 we had 2345 as the student id here then it is a violation of our primary key rules okay if this is our primary key field then every record or every every piece of data within this field must be unique there cannot be duplicates so that is what we mean by a primary key and for example let's say uh, even in classes whenever we ask someone or whenever a student comes and asks us about 
the payments about the enrolled class enrollments and anything related to the student uh, what is the first thing that the operator or the front office officer ask you the first thing that they will be asking you is what your student id okay they what they will be asking you is your student id because let's say you have the name uh, pasan okay there can be many pasans in a class so it's not really uh, easy to maintain a set of data if we have the same or if we have duplicated data uh, to identify a particular person so imagine you have uh, we have a student name pasan danushka then we have another student names pasan madhusanka okay now we have two persons and if we use the first name the person if we use the first name as our primary key it's not possible to identify or uniquely identify the person madhusanka and person darushka so the, they they are two different people but they have the same first name so if we use the first name as the primary key it is not possible to identify them uniquely that is why we use the student id to uniquely identify the uh, records or the records in the table or the items in the table so you can say that a key can be a primary key can be a single primary key or a composite primary key so in this case we have a single primary key because we have the student id as the primary key or it can be a composite primary key where the combination of multiple multiple fields is used for the key so in that case uh, imagine uh, we have another field here and uh, in for that we can use multiple fields so that a particular record becomes unique only when we consider those two particular or two or more multiple fields uh, if, if we consider only those multiple fields then that particular uh, if you take a particular record out of the table then that is that uh, single item is identified uniquely by that combination of field names okay so i hope you got the idea of the primary key then uh, we also need to understand that i spoke about the importance of interrelated entities in a table okay that the tables are interrelated or related to each other in some way so the relations shapes actually define the connection between those tables so relationships the business connection between two or more tables the business connection between two or more tables so it basically emphasizes how two or more tables are related to each other so that is what we call a relationship okay this logical relationship is technically implemented in database by using the concept called foreign keys foreign keys a field in a table that is what is a foreign key a field in a table that is mapped to the primary key of another table a field in a table a field in a table that is mapped to the primary key of another table that result in creating a relationship between the two tables a field in a table that is mapped to the primary key of another table okay so this that result in creating a relationship between the two tables so if you take this table we have the primary key here as so this is the let's say this is a table called courses okay we have a list of courses here the accounts computing history short course like that and each course has a course id and the course id is used to uniquely identify each course a0 when you say a004 it simply means the course name accounts when you have 00 c0002 that means computing so that is the idea of primary keys 
and in this table we have four side here as the primary key and i said that we need to have a relationship between two or more tables right so we are trying to build a relationship between these two tables okay so a student is normally uh, related to a course for example in bit you what do you do we have free and open source software for personal computing that is one course then we have introductory mathematics that is another course we have programming one that is another course so those are several courses that you follow so this is a list of students this is a table of students and as you can see here the student jim black follows or is related to the course id c002 that means jim black follows computing then we have James Haradine and uh, he follows accounts. Then also we have Amanda Holland and she follows C0, 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 that is computing. So both Jim Black and Amanda Holland follows the course ID C0, 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 that is computing. So that is like that. This is the foreign key and this is the primary key of the other table and this is the primary foreign key of the other corresponding table okay basically a foreign key is a column or a group of columns okay or this is a column this is a column or a field in a relational database table that provides a link between data in two tables so this foreign key is what we use to make the connection between these two tables you can see here we have course id here and we have course id here so we make we make the connection between these two tables using this foreign key so that is what you need to keep in your mind when speaking about foreign keys okay and uh, you need to keep another thing in your mind the table containing the foreign key so this is the table when you consider two tables for making a relationship, the table containing the foreign key. So this is the table that contains the foreign key. Okay, we call it the child table. And the table containing the other key, the primary key, we call it the parent table or the reference table. We use both those terms. So this is the parent table and this is the child table because it contains the foreign key okay so that uh, concludes the foreign key and then we have the index well uh, indexes creating indexes on the field speeds up any searches or source associated with this field uh, in databases actually we use searching a lot database can contain large sets of data and it might take some time to go through the database because the computation power is what matters when searching databases and in order to increase the efficiency in searching or sorting we use indexes okay the database index allows to query to efficiently retrieve data from a database that is what you need to keep in your mind when speaking about index, uh, index creating indexes okay okay so that concludes actually the basic concepts of the database and i'm pretty sure that uh, you'll be able to learn more about this uh, when you go to the semester two and where yeah, you will have the database one subject so you will get a thorough idea about the databases uh, when doing that subject okay now our uh yeah now we need to do or oh, do the practicals in LibreOffice base so we uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to apply all the concepts we learned uh, a while ago using the LibreOffice base okay now what do we do we open LibreOffice base Okay, so when you open up LibreOffice Base, first you need to install it. Uh, I think we installed the package earlier. So, first 
whenever you load the LibreOffice base, you get this window. You are asked to create a database wizard. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to create a new database and uh, it's an embedded database. So I'm using this HSQL DVD embedded. Okay. And then uh, I'll click, click next. Then it asks us to register the database for me. Okay. Uh, just register the database and then after the database file has been saved what do you want to do open the database for editing just keep it like that so those are this is a wizard and a wizard is actually you must be familiar in uh, uh, computers uh, and uh, what what does a wizard do a wizard is like a magician okay so uh, what wizard does is it manages everything for us uh, using the default settings and uh, there's not much for us to do when working with wizards so that is why wizards are really helpful and uh, this allows us to create a database using a wizard and this is the database wizard so i'll just added some information and you must have just observed that i didn't make any changes at all i just didn't make changes any at all click next and kept the settings as it is and I just click finish now it asks us to create a database okay so I'm going to create a database here let's call it uh, let's say base database okay uh, you can give any name here so this is the database so uh, we said that uh, we collect everything into a single file and this is the database management system that we are trying to store here so i store it okay then we get this window We get this particular window. So this is the basic window of LibreOffice base. We call this the database plane. Database pane. Here we have the we have, can manage tables, queries, forms, and reports. Here we call it the task pane. Uh, what do you mean by task? A task is something what we do. So we usually use this pane for creating tables, queries, forms, and reports anything related to the operations of the database we use the task pane and we call this the tables pane and then this becomes the tables pane when we are in the tables when we go to the queries this becomes queries pane forms pane reports pane it's simple then uh, this is the standard toolbar okay this is the standard toolbar this is the menu bar and this is the title bar okay this is the title bar uh, notice that we have the database name here base database dot odb that is the name that we used when saving the database we have the name database name appearing here okay so this is a basic idea of the window of the uh, libreoffice base environment now we have already created a database okay now i'm going to create a table okay so I said that in relational databases we use tables for managing information or the data piece, pieces of data related to particular entities and now I'm going to create a table. There are several ways for us to create a table. First I'm going to use the wizard here for creating a table also we can use a wizard. I'm going to create a table using the wizard. Okay. So we have we have several commonly used types of tables. I'm going to use the type business and uh, the customers. Let's say here we have the commonly used fields. Okay, the fields. I hope you can remember the fields. Uh, fields of customers. By clicking this. You can get everything here, but I'm not going to get everything to the serial, 
our tables. I'm going to keep out the city, the mm -hmm. fax number. Poster code. Yes, I'm going to keep this as it is. I'm going to keep out the notes as well. So this is a table. So these are the set of fields that I'll be using for creating my table. Okay. So just keep in mind that this is a basic wizard and it provided us everything that is uh, they are by default. Okay. Now I'm going to create next. And now we can select each of the fields and add different different settings there okay so for the title it should be a text one here we have the field type we have several field types text double real float decimal number binary begin image stuff like that okay uh, i'm yeah slack so it has another option entry required that means whether the entry or whether a value is mandatory or the compulsory for this particular field then we have length okay i'm going to put so the title is going to be like dr or mrs so miss or mr like that so i'm going to keep it uh, length of let's say 10 so just 10 characters okay uh, in most cases it's not going to be 10 characters uh, for me for me it's going to be m r and uh, dot so it's just three but i'm you no know, safe side i'm going to keep just 10 characters here it's important that you specify the length correctly because just because you have enough space just don't do or don't specify large lengths here because it might take up the space and on, in the long term it can have issues because when, when you collect so much of data uh, it's important that you have the ideal length for each field then we have the address the address is relatively long so we have 200 characters here then uh, last name first name 50 is enough then we have custom id okay we have the customer id so the custom id is something that we can use for uniquely identifying each record in the table for, for that uh, we will be using an integer okay and uh, then we have the department you can use the department name company name uh, like that okay state or province so i click next and uh, it gives us the option to create a primary key uh, if we want we can create a primary key or we can even use an existing one so i'm going to use the custom id as our uh, existing primary key click next uh, i'm also going to use the auto validity that means we do not have to enter the custom id manually it just automatically increments the value okay that's the idea click next and we have, can use the name customers visually we used a plural name here for the table customers and what do you want to do is insert data immediately Finish. so this brings us to this particular window okay now we can enter data here mr address one last name So custom id is an auto field then we can say sales department company abc phone number then we can have another email address mobile number country things like that we can enter okay so just click and then that particular data was already automatically added 
okay so just like that you can keep on adding data to this particular table customers table okay now we have the table now we just use the wizard to create a table okay and also we selected the primary key as the customer id uh, there is another way you can also copy this table you can just copy and paste and create a new table we can so this is basically depending on your requirement so you can say customer and two you can set the definition settings and create another table so we created another, another table or we can even delete that table if we don't want it okay then uh, we can also use the design view for creating a table so this is something that uh, that is preferred actually rather than using the database wizard or the table wizard this is the preferred way of creating a database table because this gives us the ability to define the attributes or the fields ourselves so i'm going to create a table called employees uh, yeah i'm going to create a table called employees and for an that for an employee we have the employee id so what is a, what do we use normally for employee id we use an integer usually okay and then we have employee name use a text i'm going to use 200 characters then uh, we have address again 200 phone number So for that we have we can have just 10 characters so in Sri Lanka we have only 10 digits per number no? so I'm going to have 10 characters uh, what else we can con connect this with a department so I'm going to create a department ID an ID is usually going to be an integer okay so what is our primary key in this one what should be our primary key so this is what i had in my uh, mind when creating a primary key so i am going to create consider this as a primary key and I'm, i'll just right click here and click primary key so that becomes the primary key okay and also i'm going to keep auto value as yes and then click save employees then you are to find the or write a name for the table and then create okay employees now the employees table was created by double clicking this you get this view and you can just enter the data okay so now we created two tables okay uh, I'm also going to create another table. In design view. Oh, I'm, I used the wizard. I'll, I had created a table called customers and I'm going to create a table called orders. And orders we have. So the order ID. Then the custom ID. and ship date that is the date of shipment of the order uh, let's say shipment country so that is enough for the moment so the settings are there by default i am not going to change them and our primary key should be order id and let's make it auto value create orders finish so this is our orders table now we have three tables okay 
okay now i'm going to define now we i said that the tables should be integrated and for that we use relationships okay now i'm going to create a relationship for that i'll use go to the tools and click relationships okay so you will get this particular window when you go to tools and relationships and for creating a relationship we have to have at least two tables so we are going to create a relationship between the customers and the orders okay there are ways for creating uh, a relationship so usually okay i'm going to create a relationship Now you can see that we have the custom ID here and in orders we have the custom ID here. Okay. So you can see that those two are same. I mean, uh, this is the primary key, key of this particular table. And in this particular table, our primary key is order ID. But I'm going to use the custom ID as the foreign key in this table. That means this is the table containing the foreign key that means this is the child table so i'm going to create a relationship between these custom ids okay you can click this custom id and drag it here okay you can click this custom id and drag it here to the custom id so that creates a relationship as you can see here okay and you can see here that we have one and in here that means this is a one to many relationship so that is automatically the uh, denoted by the LibreOffice base and I'm going to give you a idea about the types of relationships actually there are three types of relationships uh, depending on their cardinality okay uh, one is one-to-one uh, -one relationships in one in one-to-one -one relationships that means one record or one record in a table is associated with one and only one record in another table one record of a table is associated with one and only one record in another table can you give me an example for a one-to-one -one table one-to-one -one relationship an example for one-to-one Can you give me an example? In one-to-one -one relationships, one record in a table is associated with one and only one record in another table. I'll give you an example. Uh, think of the precedents in countries uh, imagine you have a table here called countries okay another table you have here presidents the names of presidents you have a list of names of presidents and here you have a list of names of the countries in the world can a country have two presidents can a country have two presidents that means can one record of the uh, can one record of the country table, let's say Sri Lanka, can one record, can Sri Lanka, I'm talking about a single record, this is, here we have, imagine, okay, here we have a country, here we have the list of presidents, and here, uh, let's say Sri Lanka, can Sri Lanka have two presidents, no, a country can have only one president so we have the list of names here and the names of president uh, appears here so 
a single record that is Sri Lanka on the countryside. Okay, Sri Lanka is associated with only one name. That means a country can have only one president and a president can have only one country. So that is a perfect example of one to one relationships. Then there is another type of relationships that is one to many relationships. So that is what we have here. That means in one to many relationships, one record in a table, one record in a table can be associated with one or more records in another table. For example, uh, think of the procedure of Uber Eats. So that is what uh, we have here as well. Think of the database uh, managed by Uber Eats. Uh, imagine you place a order. Okay, so you are a customer for them. You are a customer for them, and you place an order. Okay. So can you place only one order? No, you can place many orders. So if you consider a period of month, there can be situations where you have ordered ten times from Uber Eats. Okay. So you, that basically means you have placed ten orders from Uber Eats, but you are a customer for them. So you are the customer and you have uh, they have actually they have your title address first name last name stuff like this they have all your information here okay you are just a customer for them then you are placing an order okay you are placing not order you place 10 orders over a period of time so when you when they consider you okay when they consider the customers table what they see is you have a particular customer that is you you have placed 10 orders that means in this orders table you have 10 records for your name you have 10 records for your name uh, let's say your customer ID is one this is Let's say okay. What is it? Ah yeah, we have a relationship here. So okay. I'm not going to yeah. I'm first going to add a customer. And I'm going to add another customer here. Uh, A B C so I'm going to keep them as it is here okay so that is it so I just added another customer and now we I'm going to create an order so your customer is one Uh, let's keep it blank for the moment now you are going to create another order and you are still your custom ID is on okay now you are going to create another order okay, now you have placed three orders but you are the number or the custom ID one is the customer only so custom ID one the customer having the customer ID one has placed three orders, three separate orders, but it's still the same customer. Okay, then we can say that the customer ID zero also also ordered another order. So the customer having the customer ID zero has ordered an uh, ordered one order, but the customer having the customer ID one has three orders. Okay. So in that case, you can see that a single customer has a single customer has one or many orders. In that case, in our previous example, you saw that the customer having the customer ID one had three orders. The customer having the customer ID zero has only one order. So a single record has one or more associated records in the orders table okay and 
the next question can a order have many customers can a single order have many customers when you place an order at two ways uh, they assign you a they assign you an order id so that is what we had here we had an order id okay so they give you an order id and actually that is order id that particular order id is specific only to you the order id is not used for other customers so a customer can have many orders but a order can have only one only one customer so that is why we have one here okay so think of it like this a customer from looking at this side a customer can have n orders or many orders n represents many one or many a customer can have many orders and when you look it look at it from this side when you look at it or when you consider a single record of orders table an order can have only one customer so that is the relationship we have from here one to many and from this here we have, we have when we consider a single record we have only one customer here so that is the idea of one to many relationships then we have uh, many to many relationships as well and that is like uh, we, we have uh, many records here for a single record in the left side and vice versa uh, the example is i can give the example i can give you is the students and classes okay uh, imagine uh, now you are, you are enrolled for the free and open source software for personal computing and also you are enrolled for introductory mathematics so you basically follow uh, two classes okay you are enrolled in two classes that means uh, when you consider yourself you are one record and you are associated with uh, not just two classes actually you are enrolled in I think five semester courses so you are enrolled in five classes a single student is enrolled in or single student is associated with five different records on the other hand this free and open source computing uh, free and open source software for personal computing this particular course has many students okay on the on the other side so that is a one, many to many relationship uh, I'm sure that you may have questions here, but you can raise them if you didn't understand anything. Okay, just place the question in the chat and I'll be able to explain more if you didn't understand. Okay. Now uh, we just define the relationship. Now, uh, there's another way to actually define relationships. I, uh, I think uh, you, you saw that I click this one and drag it here. There's another one called new relation. In this also we can create a relation. In this case actually, uh, I delete this relation. Okay, I'm going to use this uh, new relation wizard. I'm going to create a relationship between customers and orders. Okay. Uh, now you have to select the two tables involved in the relationship and also the fields. So in our customers, our field will be custom ID. In our orders, our field will be custom ID. So the relationship will be built upon these two fields, the custom IDs of both fields. So in this orders table, the custom ID acts as the foreign key. And the foreign key is what makes the relationship possible between the two tables. And the customer side, we have the customer ID and it is the primary key of the parent table. Then we have several options here. We have uh, update options and delete options. We have uh, no action, update cascade, set null and set default. So what does that mean? So what are these options? Well, uh, if you select update cascade, okay, the ca that will propagate the change when parent changes. That means uh, if you select a particular customer and change his customer ID, let's say you have a customer ID as 10 and you are going to change its customer ID to 
20. Okay, now you are going to change the customer's ID and what should our database management should system should do when you update the field of the parent table. So that is what we have to specify there. Update cascade will actually do what, what it will do is it will change the custom ID of the child table as well. So if you change the custom ID from 10 to 20 in the corresponding values of the child table having the same custom ID will be changed to 20 so that cascade will propagate the changes delete will also do that if you delete the custom ID 10 all the orders associated with the custom ID 10 in the orders table will be deleted okay and then there's no action no action will actually do nothing okay and uh, do nothing in a sense that uh, No concern if parent pro delete or update. Okay, there will be no concerns. Then uh, we can set null. That means if you update, let's say the custom ID is changed from 10 to 20. If you, that means you update the custom ID, then in the respective or the corresponding child table, the corresponding custom ID will be set to null that means no value null okay just null values and set default sets actually the default value when the parent item gets deleted uh, you can specify a default value and the default will be the value will be applied when the parent value gets changed i'll just keep no action for the moment and keep the relationship and make sure that you saved it save it here, okay and now okay uh, now we created a relationship and now we need to create a form okay uh, I gave you an example earlier as well uh, we I told you about the creation of forms uh, when uh, registering for the BID degree program you you filled a form okay you filled all your details and you uh, created your accounts there you basically fill the form containing your information your personal information okay so what do you think happened to that those information or those data fields that you filled what basically happened was that you filled the data and submitted the form and when you submitted the form all your data went into a database and get got stored there so that's what happened okay so in order to create a database form okay I mean databases are used to store data but there must be a way for us to input the data there must be an interface where you can enter the data so that basically handles how to input the data to the database so forms are used as that interface where we will be using the forms for inputting the data into the database it is a form and it is a front end for data entry okay so in this uh, base as well we can create forms for adding data and we can use this visa to create a form so when you create visa you get this window and uh, i'm going to add uh, a form for adding the data related to customers so just by clicking this, all the data fields will be added to the right side and this will be eligible to be added to the form. Click next and you can even add a sub form. I'm not going to add a sub form. A sub form is uh, actually it gives you the opportunity to add more data for a particular. Uh, when you add the details of a customer, you can also add the details of its corresponding orders. So I'm not going to add that for the moment. And then uh, you can specify how the data will be arranged in the main form. Uh, you can just design a define a leaf, uh, design here. I'm going to use this. Or oh, this even this can be used. So this looks better. Okay, click next. Uh, and then uh, you can the data set the data entry mode. 
this form is to be used for entering new data only. Existing data will not be displayed. Actually, we it's better if we can view the existing existing data as well. In our case, actually, and uh, you can make your changes as your preferences uh, depending on your uh, requirements. And click next, and you can set a style here. Okay. So I'm going to keep this and no border. And you can select set a name for the uh, form. Just create customers and uh, finish. Okay, so this is the form window. And uh, you know that we have already added two uh, data already to the form. So those are displayed here. So you can see here the record numbers here and you can move through the record. So I'm going to add a new record. Go to the record tree and we, let's say this address three uh, last name three first name three our custom id is auto field department is something let's say it department company is some yeah phone number then we can have an email address a mobile number so anything like that so the information like that can be stored there so then just click the save record then that record gets saved let's add another record let's say doctor address here doctor's first name last name uh, medical department company is uh, some kind of an hospital and telephone number .com. okay so i just added some dummy data there and click save now we have four records here and you can uh, go through the records and see different different data entered by you okay and that's all that so this is a form so this is how you enter the data into the uh, database okay now whenever you want to Add data just double click this and the form will be open okay so now we created a form then uh, you can even use the design view and that's a bit of a complicated task because you have to do everything yourself uh, for creating the forms, I would advise you to create use the wizard for creating forms because it's kind of easy. Then uh, we have queries. So what is a query? So with uh, forms, what we did was we input data to the database, and with queries, uh, we can ask the database several uh, questions. Okay, once the data has been placed into a database users can make inquiries and analyze data users can basically ask questions from the database and get responses so that is what you do uh, to get the information from a database so imagine uh, now you just added your the information to the bit database by entering your details in a form when registering for the bit okay now what happens on the other side is uh, the staff at BID must be using some kind of a query to view your information. So when you uh, go to the office, what they look for is your student ID. And when they enter your student ID to the database or to the assistant, uh, what they see is they, they will see all your details. So they on, on the inside, what happens is they utilize a query to get or retrieve the data so it asks the database to give me some data and the database gives you the uh, information and for that we use queries okay once the data has been placed into a database users can make inquiries and analyze data 
a query is basically a question you ask from your database. It's a special view. You ask something and it gives you a view. Okay. Uh, and queries can actually select records from one or more tables in the database and they can be viewed. Okay. So query can give you or respond you by giving you data from multiple tables. Okay. Uh, there are several types of queries. There are select queries, parameter queries, cross type queries, action queries, that means make table query, append query, delete, update, union. Different types of queries are there. Okay, for creating queries in the base, actually there are several ways. Uh, here we have not yet created any query. I'm going to create a query. I'm first going to use the design. Uh, I'm first going to use the wizard for creating a query. So I'm going to see how we can create a query using the wizard. I'm going to use the customers. Okay, I want to see the names of each customer. Name, title, the address, first last name and first name. That's all I want to see from the customers. I don't want to see any other thing. Okay, I will just want to ask the database to give me the customer, the title, the address, first name and the last name of each customer. So that's all what I'm asking for the database to give me and the database should now give me this. Click next. And we can define the sorting order. Should we sort by the title or the address? Uh, let's say, let's sort it by the title. Click next. Uh, then we can create a search condition. I'll keep it as it is. Click next. Then we can create alias. For the title, we can use title and address. And instead of this last name, now I'm going to create a space here. So it makes beautiful. First name. Okay. Alias is just uh, something that uh, represents the field. Okay. You can use alias for uh, representing and it gives a better overall uh, view actually click next so this is uh, we can create query customers name you can name the query and click finish okay so uh, i wanted to get information about the title address last name and first name of each customer and here you get okay so these are the data that you added so i'm going to add another data here from the forms I'm going to add a new data. Let's say this is new address. This is the new data that I'm going to add. Last name is no last name, new first name, new department, new company, phone number is and new email. Okay, country Sri Lanka. I'm, I added this form, I just click save and added a new record. Okay, uh, you all can hear me, right? I added a new one and now I'm going to use the query now I have already created the query so I'm going to double click it and it should show the new address this is the new data record that I added and you can see that the new address new last name so that is the details or details of the new data customer so just like that you can use the queries for getting information okay so there are there is another there are two more ways for creating queries you can even use the query in design view so 
So uh, this is what you get when you're creating a query in design. I'm going to use the design view for creating a query. Okay, I'm going to use uh, the customers table. Click add. And uh, I said that the query can be used to retrieve data from multiple tables. I'm going to use add the orders also. Okay, now we have these two tables. Okay, I'm going to display the customer's title. Okay, customer's title. And customer's first name. Customer's last name. And also, I want to get the orders. Orders customer ID. So I'm going to retrieve information from multiple tables. You can add an uh, alias here. You can use customer title. Remember that when you use this, instead of title, you will always see the customer title. Okay. Customers first name, customers last name, order ID, custom ID, ship date. Okay, so the oh yeah, this will come from the orders table and these all will come from the customers table. Okay, so uh, in this he, uh, here, the visible actually represents whether the particular field should be visible in our view. I'm going to hide the custom ID here. Okay, and that's all. I'm going to create or uh, save this one and name it customers. Orders query. Okay, I'm going to double click it. As you can see here, Mr. ABC has placed three orders, and Mr. Last Name, uh, First Name, uh, this is customer zero, has placed the order number four. Okay, so this is what this is a uh, Query that I created manually. You can even actually edit here. Right click and edit. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hide this actually. The order ID. No, I'm going to hide the ship date and click save. Now save. Double click. Now you can see that the ship date is hidden. So when you uncheck the visible Take it gets hidden there. Okay. I'm going to have it here. Okay, here ship I uh, date. You can even specify functions. Uh, you can get the average or stuff like that, but uh, in our set of data, we cannot do that for the moment. No, so no function. You can set a criteria. Uh, I will get back to you when uh, dealing with the past papers and uh, there are some examples. Okay, so this is a basic idea of creating a query. Okay, so this is a, this is the query that we just created. Then there is another way to create a query. We can use SQL, Structured Query Language. So there is a language. Uh, we can use a create, we can create queries using Structured Query Language. Just click this. Okay. And uh, we will get this one. Okay, now I'm going to produce a simple query using SQL. I'm going to, I want to uh, display the information or I want to ask the database to give me the database or the data of all the customers. So I'll just be, uh, write select star star represents all from table what is our table customers okay, click save customers uh, 
let's call it SQL query customs okay so I just created a query in C, C structured query language so this is the one okay now you can see all the data of customers in a table right I hope you get an idea and uh, you won't be interested much on the SQL language but you will need to have an idea about the three types of creating queries and also the way of creating queries okay and then finally we have reports okay now uh, you knew that you knew that uh, at the end of the day especially in uh, organizations what the top level managers are interested in are the reports okay so you imagine you go as shop in keys shop in a key supermarket okay now you buy the essentials and you come home but at the end of the day for the top management of keys what they at the end of the day what they look for is the records of sales okay so that's what matters for them and for that they cannot go through just you know they cannot let's say we have a table called transaction and they cannot go through all these transactions and see uh, everything what they want is a summary so we use reports for creating summarized documents like that okay so we can also use the wizard to create a report okay you get this window when uh, creating wizard for you and uh, we can use even tables of queries so i'm going to use query custom orders query okay i want all this information there and these are the alias that I'll be using and they are automatically there. Uh, I can group by old ID and then no, I can group by uh, unfortunately we do not have customers ID here. Uh, I think we can group by customers first name let's say next then we can sort and we can decide whether we sort by sending or descending order and create a layout I'm going to just create this click next and uh, we can create either static report or dynamic report when you cre create a static report you can edit the layout of the static report but you cannot uh, generate it dynamically that means uh, you cannot modify it okay so I'm just going to create a static report so this is the report as you can see here we had four orders and uh, customer ABC had if you can remember we had placed three orders from customer ABC and you can see here the orders are grouped by the customer's first name so the customers ABC customer having the first name as ABC has three orders and customer having the first name as first name one has a single order so this is just a report so by looking at this a top level manager can basically I get an idea that this particular customer has placed three orders and this particular customer has placed only one order so this is just a simple scenario but uh, in uh, real cases uh, this is going to be much more complex and uh, they will actually create more complex queries for getting the desired information so I just wanted to demonstrate to you how you can actually you make use of reports for creating or getting the information that matters okay so that uh, actually concludes the basic uh, demonstration of the base using LibreOffice and I want to give you an uh, idea about here uh, when you double click a table okay I'm going to I went to the table okay so I have completed all this and I'm just went back to the tables when you double click a table okay notice 
the everything notice everything about the ui okay in the examination you might be asked about several things from the ui and you need to have a good idea about the front end of the ui user interface so in this uh, when you double click a table you can see that uh, all the data that we have added uh, remember look at the title bar of this one we have customers hyphen then base database 2 okay uh, and libreoffice base i have base database 2 here i think because i created the database the same name earlier but usually we have the database name here okay usually it should be base database and uh, we have the customer name here so things like that are important and you will realize that when you do the exercises yourself uh, in the really also i think you have an exercise uh, you have several lab sheets and i highly advise you to go through those exercises and be familiar with what they are asking you to do it's really important that you uh, get familiar with the uh, base and because in the examination you might be asked several mcq mcq questions and uh, we cannot expect them to be you know uh, we do not know how they will ask the question so it's really important that uh, you cover all the aspects uh, before facing the examination okay uh, i will go through two past paper questions and see what we can get there okay i want you to answer these questions so this is the 2019 past paper okay 2019 paper this uh, I think uh, in a single paper, uh, when we had 25 questions per paper, there were only two, uh, about three questions from base, three or four questions from base, but this time it might be different. Okay, so you need to be familiar with every aspect of base. So this is the question. Consider the following statements. MS Access is categorized as a free and open source database application. Part two. A database is a collection of information that is organized in a way that can easily be managed. Question 3. MySQL, OpenOffice Calc and Oracle database are few examples for relational database management systems. Which of the following statements is a correct regarding database and database applications? What is the answer? Please uh, give me the answer in the chat. What is the answer? I hope you can see the question. MS Access is categorized as a free and open source database application. A database is a collection of information that is organized in a way that can easily be managed. My SQL, OpenOffice Calc and Oracle database are few examples for relational database management systems. Which of the following statements is are correct regarding databases and database applications? What are the options we have? Please give me an answer. Okay, we have two answers. Answer D. Answer D. Two and three only. Okay, two person, two people actually gave answer. Two students gave the answer as D. Let's see. MS Access is categorized as a free and open source database application. Is it true? LibreOffice Base is, and free, is actually a free and open source application, but MS Access, Microsoft Access, that comes under the Microsoft Office suit, and it is not free. It is a paid software. So, MS Access is not categorized as a free and open source database application. So, therefore, the answer one is wrong. So, this is not an answer. Then, uh, a database is a collection of information that is organized in a way that can easily be managed. Yes, that is what we've been talking about all day long and uh, there is a slight confusion regarding the terminology here sometimes we use instead of information we use data here but uh, this is the closest one we can get so a database is a collection of information that is organized in a way that can easily be managed so yeah we use databases for managing the data easily then for three we have mysql open office calc 
and Oracle database are few examples for relational database management systems. Is it true? My MySQL is obviously a database management system and it is a relational database management system. Okay, that is fine. Oracle database is also a relational database management system. That is fine. But OpenOffice Calc, OpenOffice Calc is a spreadsheet software and uh, we followed even several examples from there and that is not a relational database application software. That is just a spreadsheet application. Okay. Uh, if we had LibreOffice or OpenOffice base here, then it would have been an answer. But since OpenOffice Calc is not a relational database software, uh, we have to neglect this one as well. So therefore, only two is correct, then the result will be B. Okay, answer is B. Thank you. Uh, then we have 17. Consider the following tables, figure 3 and 4, created in OpenOffice Base to answer the questions of 17 to 18. Okay, we have a table here, work details, and then we are in this. So, two tables, and I wanted to give you an idea. Normally, when we have a table here in Base, when we double click it, we get this window. We get this window where we can see the information of all the uh, records of the table. Uh, we call this the table data view. Okay, just keep it in mind. We call this the table data view. Okay, back to the paper. Uh, we are asked to identify the most suitable fields that should be used as primary key in the worker details table, figure 3. So what should be used as the primary key here? Answer please. In the worker details table, what should be what should we use as the primary key? Should it be work ID or the sub ID or the address, name, skill type, our date? We have several choices. What is the primary key that we use uh, that we should use in our table? Please give me an answer. In this table, what is it that we should use for the primary key? What field should we use for our primary key? Come on, answer this. A. Uh, you are probably giving the answer for ID. Okay. Okay, one says, answer is A, work ID. Work ID should be used as a primary key. Others, A. Okay, two students say A is the answer. Yes, work ID should be used as a primary key. So, primary key is something that you use for uniquely identifying all the records. Okay, so if you use sub ID, you can see that's uh, uh, S003 and S003 is used in two rows that means it cannot definitely be used it cannot be used as the primary key uh, the address can obviously be same i mean there can be instances if if, if a particular person if two person if two people come from the same place then their address will be same so it's not ideal and there can be people with same names there can be people with same skill type so there are two electrics electricians here and also our validate is not a uh, primary key so in that case work id should be the primary key so therefore the answer is a which of the following fields is are considered as foreign keys in the table working days we are four uh we just didn't check the answer for the 17th the answer is A. Okay. For 18, which of the following fields is are considered as foreign keys in the table working days? So what is the uh, foreign key that we use should that we should use for working days table? Answer please.
So for in case what we use for linking the two tables. Okay, so that is the uh, particular field that creates the relationship between two tables. So what is the foreign key that we should use in the working desk table? Answer please. Okay, two students say A as the answer. Okay, what is A? A means one only. Yes. So the foreign key should be used for communicate for building the relationship between two tables. Therefore, if we are going to connect these two tables, then you can see that work ID is in the both tables. Therefore, you can use work ID as the uh, foreign key for the working days table. Okay, that is it. Question 19. Consider the following query designed using the table working days. Consider the following query designed using table working days. So this is the table working days. Okay. And we have a query, a query using created using the design view of uh, queries. I hope you can remember this. So we have the work ID here. So that means work ID should be displayed. Then we have number of hours. So we had number of hours here as well. So the number of hours should be here and please remember see that we have an alias given for the number of hours here therefore in our answer the number of there shouldn't be a query result having number of hours as a column instead of number of hours we have the total number of hours as our text therefore uh, what are our answers? We cannot have this as an answer because it has number of hours and in D also we had number of hours. So answer could be B and C or E depending on whether it is an error or not. So we can get rid of answer A and D straight away because it does not have the alias as in, uh, not total number of hours here. Okay, so I hope uh, if you if it wasn't clear, please mention it in the chat. Uh, then uh, we use working days for the work, getting the work ID and also the working days table for getting the total number of hours. Then both us visible. See that we have the function as group and the group by sum. Okay, we are grouping the work IDs by the sum, by the summation. We are grouping the work IDs by the summation. So what is and the criterion is E1 E001 or E002. Okay. So what is it then? Answers B O C. Uh, yes, one says C. Okay, thank you. Okay, look at the uh, look at what we have been given here. We have to group the results by the work ID. That means the work ID should be results and the uh, group should be done based on the number of hours. Okay, so the both B and D B and C do that. Okay, see that uh, E1 has 19 hours, E2 has 9 hours because in this table we have three records for E1, E001, and he has 874. That sums up as uh, 19 hours, and for E2 we have 9 hours, and for E3 the sum is 13 hours. So B has all these things are grouped based on their total number of hours and it seems perfectly seems to be a perfect answer but here we have a criterion that means we have this query under a certain criteria where uh, the result should have only e1 or e2 okay e only e1 or e2 
in that case uh, we have to go with the answer C because we have to have uh, only one or E2 okay so that concludes the 2019 paper and let's do the answers in the 2018 paper as well Okay, uh, which of the following statements are is are correct regarding the following two screenshots of the table created in open office space? What is the answer? I think you will be able to better answer this once you go through a practical yourself because uh, these are actually practical aspects and you will be able to realize the usability or the several workflow issues while going through the practical so i will advise you to go through the uh, practical and then i'll try to go through the questions past paper questions and let me know if you find any uh, questions regarding the past papers and uh, i will anyway try to discuss these questions in a future session uh, you have yeah you have only I think one two three questions here yeah only three questions from the base uh, please uh, do the practical yourself because it's important that you follow the lab sheets and uh, uh, once you go through the lab sheets you will be able to get an idea of how the open office I mean the LibreOffice base works and based on that you can answer the questions later because in the paper also you will be tested on the practical aspects of the application therefore it's really important that you follow the practicals yourself uh, so i advise you to follow the practical and then come back to the past papers and answer the papers and uh, let me know if you come across any issue while facing the paper and uh, we'll be able to discuss in the uh, group conversations that we have so uh, yes, I think uh, I'm going to conclude the session now. Now it's uh, 8 past 8. So I hope you had no issues in understanding the concepts. And even if you had any questions, please let me know. And uh, uh, yes, thank you very much for your time. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have a nice day. Bye.